Hey guys, here is the first step for the DIY Minecraft Chia Pack. Here, basically a vase, so something you can put the dirt in and the seeds in for the Chia Pet, and it's going to be a Minecraft square basically with an open top. And so you're going to need some flour and some salt. So that's what I'm getting out. Flour and salt is a very easy, cheap way to make dough. And the dough is set pretty quick because you don't need a kiln and you can use your oven and it'll probably take, I mean at the longest, like a day to get everything cooked. And now <clears throat> the easy part here is just getting out a dish to mix everything in and a spoon or something that you have on hand like that. And we're going to mix the dough. Um, you will also need water. This pan works really well, but I'm getting something else, I guess. And I'm going to use my teapot with water because it's, I don't know, it's easy to pour and it's cute. So whatever you have for water, it doesn't have to be warm or cold. It doesn't matter like when you're using making jello or pudding or anything like that. And it's probably going to be about one cup for the water, maybe a little less. So get out your supplies. This probably is going to be the part that takes the longest it seems like. And we can start mixing. So let's see. <clears throat> you will need one cup of salt. And you don't want to use kosher salt or any of that font or any of that big chunky salt, the decorative salt, you just want to use regular table salt. And then the flour, you can use anything from self-rising to rye, it doesn't matter really. You can use gluten-free, well, I've never tried gluten-free actually. This is just regular, regular old bread flour. So I've got one cup and I'll need one more. The ratio is always one to two, so one cup salt to two cups flour. And then <clears throat> I need water. That's really the only ingredients. That right there. So, so we've got just enough water to make it a dough, which can range anywhere from a wet dough that sticks to your fingers to like when you're making Italian bread, how it's really like stiff. I like going towards the stiffer side so that when I'm mixing it, I don't have to add as much flour to keep the dough from sticking to my hands. Um, add a little bit more water. You're looking for the dough, if you're mixing uh, with a spoon first, to get into like big crumbles so that after that <clears throat> uh, you can mix the dough with your hands and you can kind of even out those crumbles so that it's just a big ball of dough <clears throat> like play-doh and <clears throat> so you'll end up with like no flour left and a big ball of squishy dough and it's probably almost time to start mixing with my hands this part does take a little while but it, uh, it's just to get a good consistency and if you have too wet, the dough is too wet, you can add more flour. I wouldn't add more salt, I would add more flour. And this is the part where you can start forming the ball with the dough. Um, if you've ever done pizza dough or made dough on your own, this is pretty much it, or played with Play-Doh. This is, this is it, this is what you're doing. And, um, so doesn't take too much effort, just a lot of squishing. Um, if your hands get tired pretty easy, then just take it slow. It does need to be mixed, but it doesn't need to be mixed a lot like you do when you're kneading dough, so it should be a pretty simple task. And when you have all the flour from your bowl, you can make a ball out of the dough and put it aside. And you're going to get a, another dish. I'm getting a baking dish just like this one. This is 
basically a cake pan and I'm going to get another one so that I can put my creation in a baking dish to be baked. Now there's, I'm going to show you a couple of different ways you can make your Minecraft vase and the first one is with flat sides. So this is a rounded out piece of dough and you could just put it in the dish and then layer on top of it around the sides. Um, like coils of dough that you've rolled out into like a snake pattern. You can make the shape into a square and do the same thing and keep the bottom uh, flat like this. So that's the first thing you could do. You could also, um, well, I'm getting out a cutting board here so I'll have a different surface to work on instead of my, my work surface. I'm going to protect it. So we've got a cutting board. You could also make, I mean I'm making it flatter here, just showing you how flat it could get. But you could also take it and when you smush it into a ball, you can make like a little dish out of it, depending on how big you want your creation to be. Could just be as simple as that. I wouldn't make it much bigger than this out of salt dough because I do you think the sides kind of fall down in the hot oven? Um, because it's so hot, the sides kind of like smush down. Makes it kind of like melt a little bit. And so I'm going to use a coil. And it's just as simple as that. You snake it out and then you do that. You put it in a coil shape. And I'm going to make the bottom um, it's a little bit wider, just a square here. And then I'm going to roll out some more dough and I'm going to build up the sides um, with coils. It's going to be just wrapping the dough around the outside there to build walls. And that doesn't need to be wet. The dough is already sticky enough. If your dough is really dry, you'll want to dip the pieces that are going to be put together um, in some water first. But then just be careful about how it sticks to the pan because that wet dough will stick a lot. You're going to want to take it out and check it anyway, but that is something to look forward to. Um, so yep, just building up the sides. I'm going to do probably three or four layers here. And, uh, keep, keep rolling out uh, the dough. So, you don't have to do very long stretches. You can just do the short stretches there. Halfway around, three quarters way around at a time. My advice there is three or four inches tall on the sides, on each of the sides. And, yep, they can overlap. Um, the top doesn't have to be completely even. You can get to that at the next part, but um, if one side is taller than the other, that's really okay as well. But you can fix it so that they're even if you want. And you can move the sides in or out a little bit, depending on how you can make it more of a square. It may fall in on itself a little bit and not be like a right angle perfectly, but it'll be pretty close. And check the shape again. And there you go. So I'm going to put that in the oven for about an hour so it'll get just crispy enough. And then I'll have to take it out and check on it. But the oven is set for 250 degrees and the sides are not going to smush down that much because it's only at 250 and it's not, not too wobbly. So it should be fine. So there we go. Put it in the oven. 
And while you're in the kitchen, get out some tin foil or a saran wrap so you can wrap the rest of that dough and stick it in the fridge so it'll be ready for the next project that you do. And it does get a little darker in the fridge, so if you were planning on not painting it, the dough will be a little darker usually after taking it out of the fridge, but it's okay, right? Now get out a trivet or a hot pad so you can take out your dough from the oven and get a hot pad. Get in the oven, get out that pan that you are cooking on and go find a spatula. You're going to see that the dough is stuck still to the pan and it won't just come off easily. If you had left this craft on this pan for the entire length that it needed to be baked, it could be quite difficult to get this creation out of the pan at the very end. Because this craft does need to bake probably another seven hours before it is done. So you can pry it from the pan, go at it from different sides, and it'll pop right up and then you can stick it back in the oven for the rest of the seven hours and that's just because of the density um, of, the, of the salt dough really. I could say anywhere from five to seven hours is very appropriate for this craft. So put it back in there and when it is done baking um, or after, no I'm sorry, put, take it out, let it unstick and then let it cool and then you're going to want to add another layer of dough if it wasn't deep enough the first time. I liked it a little bit deeper of a pot for this um, project so I'm adding the extra dough now and then I'll put it back in the oven for the seven hours and it'll cook all the way through. So that's what I'm doing. And that's my last layer right there. If it was too tall before, it could have smushed down and fallen, so that's why I'm doing it this way.